everybody, Hello. it's book haul time. That's right. As you know, and April was the month where I just keep home. went a little slightly overboard, just a little bit. I don't think it's quite as extensive as some of the other hauls we've had in the past, but we still, well, I still have <laughs> a lot of books, I should clarify. So I'm going to start by talking about all the books that publishers were so kind yes. to send our way or nice. to grant me access to. Actually, there's only one digital one, so I don't know why I said the last part. The digital book is The Shadi Shadi Setup by Lily Vale. And this is a romance book that is coming out in September. The description is basically an Indian American woman signs herself and her boyfriend up for a matchmaking site to prove they're a perfect match, but she ends up getting paired with her ex boyfriend instead. Oh no. It's basically rom com shenanigans. That and is I terrible. am here for it. So thank you so much to Penguin for granting me access to that book. I cannot oh. wait to get caught up in the shenanigans. Such a bummer though. It's just like, ah. I mean, true, true. I will not deny that. Okay, going on with the arcs, we have The Lucky List, which is by Rachel, Rachel or Raquel, I'm not sure if it's Rachel or Raquel, Lippincott, and this comes out in June. So it says, Emily and her mom were always lucky, but their luck ran out three years ago when her mom died from cancer and nothing right. has felt right for Emily since. And Emily, at some point is in this book, finds her mom's senior bucket list. So she calls mm -hmm. it The Lucky List. And so she and, her dad's best friend's daughter, Blake, right. sure. they decide to try and cross things off this list together. Alrighty. Cute concept. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have to check it out. This is from Simon & Schuster. Thank you very, very much nice, for very that. Nice. From Scribner Books, we have Damnation Spring, which is by Ash Davidson, and Ooh. it says it's an epic immersive debut, a deeply human story of a Pacific Northwest logging town and the threats that could derail its way of life. So it sounds very environmental, and I don't normally gravitate towards those things, and I actually had no idea this was coming in the mail until it showed up, but I'm grateful anyway to have received it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh, this one I am excited about though. Okay, so the next one is a book also from Simon Teen, and it's called Made in Korea by Sarah Suk. This cover is so cute. So Valerie sells K-beauty products at her school. It's kind of a very lucrative business sure. <laughs> for her and her cousin, Charlie. And she's doing it because she wants to go and take her grandmother to Paris one day. And that's what she's trying to get the money for. Right. And then a new kid named Wes shows up in class. He also needs money because he wants to pursue music after graduation and his parents kind of don't want that for him. Not surprising. And so he realizes that the you know K-pop beauty business is actually a great and lucrative thing. And he starts competing with Valerie and her cousin. Oh, it's terrible. It's, it, it's, it already sounds great, honestly. It sounds like it's going to be delightful because we all know, we all know that there's going to be something between those two. Like, oh, yeah. there's no way. Totally. So I can't wait to read that as well. Fun. Oh, so, many, so many books a little time. All right, two boxes before we move on. The first one is from Tor. This box, oh, there's a sign. I actually hadn't opened this prior to this video, so exciting times, but look, it's so pretty. All right, so there is a print, and if you are familiar with the cover, you probably already know what the book is. There's a very pretty pen. There is a sign book plate and a letter, and apparently a motorbike going by our apartment. It's really cute because the book actually came wrapped in tissue paper with a stamp on it, which is That's neat. So cute! Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to rip that. I will try not to rip the front, at least. Anyway, oh, it's double wrapped. Wow. Okay, it's a very short novella called A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Harrow, and this is her take on the Sleeping Beauty story. Oh, that's cute. Which, I love fairy tales, I love fairy tale retellings, and I definitely am in for this one because it just, it sounds great. So thank you, Tor, for sending that wonderful box. I really appreciate it. And speaking of boxes, there's this rather substantial one that came with this print on it. This one is from HMH Team, if I'm correctly remembering. Ooh. It contains a finished copy of The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. Lynette Noni is actually an author that I've heard of before, but for a different series. I think the other series had werewolves in it, which is probably why it always stuck in my mind. I actually know nothing about this book, but Sarah J Maas blurbed it. I'm pretty sure, yeah, see, her blurb is right there. So you guys know I love Sarah J Maas. So I will Very definitely pretty. be checking out this story. It also comes with this tiny kit. It has, it's, it's called a wellness kit because it has a face mask, facial tissue, hand cleaner, thermometer strip, hand sanitizer, and a stylus and a pen in it, which is pretty cool. That's cute. Handy, wouldn't you say? So thank you so much HMH team one of those prison for that. Things. And now we can move on to the finished copies. So first from Simon and Teen, we got quite a few books here like legitimately quite a few books. They were so generous. Let's go through all of them. So let's start with another book by Ra 
Raquel Lippincott, I want to say, but this time in collaboration with Mickey Daughtry, and the book is called All This Time. I love the aesthetic of this cover. I know nothing about what this book is about, so we're gonna find out together. Can you find true love after losing everything? Kyle and Kimberly are the perfect couple, and then Kimberly drops a bomb on their relationship on the night of their graduation party. They get into an accident, oh. and when they wake up, Kimberly has died, and oh, Kyle has a brain injury. Terrible. And then he meets Marley, who has suffered a loss that she thinks is her fault, and their when their paths cross, they kind of start to see a lot of similar things okay. in each other. So I guess we'll find out. That's Sounds very dramatic. Sad. Then we have the book Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, which has this really bright yellow cover. This is about two sisters named Jane and June. They're kind of estranged until Jane finds out that June actually has cancer and that brings oh. them back together. I have only ever read Emergency Contact from Mary H.K. Choi, but I really like the way she writes and tells her story. And I'm really looking forward to reading this one, mostly because it has the sister aspect to it, which is something that I'm always drawn to when it comes to my fiction. That is correct. I also got a finished copy of a book I really, really enjoyed earlier this year, and that's A Fall Love Story by Lonely. This is also from Simon & Schuster. This one is about two teens, Lynn and Bao. Their families run rival fall restaurants across the street from one another, and so they Cute. basically don't hang out together because their sure. friends yeah. are enemies. Until the one and day so that they. <laughs> they're assigned to work on a piece together for the school oh, newspaper, and they realize that they actually like each other. Friends like, sure. More than friends like, probably. And it is wonderful. I absolutely enjoyed this story. It's less Romeo and Juliet than you'd think, and more just two teens who are just trying to unravel the secret that has been keeping their families apart, and also getting to know each other and decide how they want to pursue the futures that they dream of. So, very fun. Would highly recommend. There's a hint of tobacco market in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes there is! That's, that's correct. <laughs> The next book is from Harper Kids, and it's called Finding Junie Kim by Ellen O. Oh. I also do not know what this one is about, but we're about to find out. So it says, oh, it says, okay, Weenie Diverse Books co-founder Ellen O oh has created a masterpiece inspired by her mother's real life experiences during the Korean War. Wow. That's, That's heavy already. Already heavy. And it says that it's about a girl named Junie Kim, and she has to decide whether she's going to stay quiet or speak up when racist graffiti starts appearing at her middle school. On top of that, she's assigned a project where she has to look into someone's history, and she decides that she's gonna talk to her grandmother and find out about her grandmother's experiences during the Korean War. Sounds like it's gonna be either really sad Possibly heartbreaking, but also very moving. Racist graffiti and at I, the middle school. How young are those vandals? Very young, apparently. Apparently, gosh. Okay, from Penguin, I got a finished copy of What's Not to Love by Emily Wiberly and Austin Siegeman Broca. This is the fourth book that they've penned together, and it is yet another YA contemporary yeah. romance. So this one in particular focuses on two rivals at high school who compete sure. about everything everything yeah and then when things kind of fall out of place because their competition gets a little too intense their principal decides that they need to be forced to team up together in order to plan their school's 10-year reunion for the alumni that year so they're in charge of that and as they work together and start spending more time together things kind of happen between those two as you might guess <laughs> so we had a college flashback <laughs> and this one is basically exactly what these two authors have always written so I'm assuming it's a fun time. Sure. And then from Berkeley, we got three different things. The first book is The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. This is about a rabbi and a former porn star, and they kind of have to team up together in order to get the thing that they both want. Obviously, they're probably going to fall in love at some point along sure. the way. Haven't read this one yet, but I did really like Rosie's debut novel, The Roommate, when I read it last year, so I'm looking forward to checking this out. This book, on the other hand, I actually did read, and it's People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is about two best friends, Poppy and Alex, and they have an annual tradition of going on a week-long vacation every summer, and they've been doing this for like a decade. Oh. Until the one fateful vacation where something happens, and they basically stop talking to each other. They don't hate each other, but they don't. St they stop talking to each other. And Poppy has now reached a point where she's in a rut with her career and her life, and she realizes that the last time she was really happy was during that said fateful trip. And so she decides to reach out to Alex, ask him if he wants to, you know, renew their tradition, go on a trip, and he, surprisingly, 
agrees. And so now Poppy has this one week to make things right between them and to figure out what it is that she really wants. And it was really, really good. It didn't quite eclipse the love I have for her other adult contemporary novel, which I also read last year, Beach Read, but it was just fun. I'm normally not a big friends to lovers romance huh. reader, but there was something about the way she wrote Poppy and Alex that just felt really relatable and really easy for me to root for. Yeah. So. Much awesome. Speaking of fun things, <laughs> I also read this book, Dale for Aunties, oh which is boy. by Jesse Q. Satanto. Mackie pretty much knows exactly how this book went yeah, down totally. because it was, I was, it was a blow by blow. It was like live tweeting. I appreciate it yeah, in person. That's true. Which is just basically ranting to your significant other in bed. <laughs> so, that's in this book, is. main character Madeline Chan is set up on a blind date, except that things kind of go wrong because her blind date gets a bit handsy and she ends up accidentally killing him. <laughs> So she turns to her mother and her aunties for help in, you know, covering up the crime, except that the dead body accidentally gets shipped to the resort island where the Chans have been hired to basically help out with the huge billionaire wedding that is happening there that weekend. And so shenanigans ensue. <laughs> On top of that, you could also throw in the fact that Madeline's ex-boyfriend, who is the love of her life and she's never gotten over him, happens to also be on site at this wedding location. In a great... Further shenanigans ensue. And oh, this book boy. was so hilarious. I had so much fun reading it. Like, honestly, it was such a delight. If, and would if, highly recommend if you need something like light and beachy and, and fun. And over the top. And over the top crazy. ridiculous, but in the best like, way. Yeah, like, it's it's just insane. It like, was so good, though. It was so good. Like, I enjoyed like, it so much. Like the, like, the, like, the, like, the complete absurdity of it all is part and parcel of the it's, experience. It's why it was so good. Exactly. Because it was it's that... Just like, Absurd. Like, don't expect like, oh, that you know, like logic and no. This nah, is dude, just... we 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 don't ask for that kind of stuff no, here. No, not at all. But, but very enjoyable, great. nonetheless. Yeah. So thank you fun. to all the publishers who so generously sent books my way. That's right. We interrupt the usual flow of physical copies to talk about some digital copies that I always buy. So there was a Riordan imprint sale, um, sale kind of right. here, thereabouts, here and there. But so I decided, I thought, all right, not perfect time to sort of build your library in that sense. Which you're trying to do. Which I have been trying to do. So I was able to get some books from the Arusha series. So the End of Time, Tree of Wishes, and Song of Death. The three books we have not We have yet not owned. read at all. Uh, or or, or uh, read. Yeah. So, so that's there. Firekeeper, which is Stormrunner's book mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Arusha's sort of like entire story was sort of based on the epic uh, Hindu poem, the Mahabharata. And uh, J.K. Cervantes' uh, Firekeeper centers more in sort of like uh, Mayan. Say Mayan. There you yeah. go. So um, The only thing I remember about that book is the, the Ishkaka, the, the goddess of Thank chocolate. Thank you. See? Yeah, you knew definitely. exactly where I was going. Like who else? Like if we were going to like pledge our lives to any particular like pantheon I think god, we would pick that. why not the god of chocolate? <laughs> it's like yeah. Anyway, sorry, but that's just me. Side um, tangent. Thrawn Ascendancy book two is is out, and I'm just piling on the Thrawn book so I can have a Thrawn. Man, binge. you should just binge the entirety. Of that's that. true. It's just because who doesn't love Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Star Wars universe? He's the kind of like he rose to power because of his incredible tactical mind. The original sort of like the first few books that you know that that he was introduced uh, in the old canon. He knew the ins and outs of a of a, of a culture's uh, of a of a species even um, like like psyche just by studying She's their so art. Smart. Yeah, so studying that art gets you uh, how the, the keys to beat them. And then last but certainly not least, oh, The Old Guard, uh, Tales Through Time, oh, number one. one. I think this is this, this series of sort of like prequels. Okay. Um, it's, it's sort of finally out, the first issue, so glad to have that on the shelf. I can't wait to read it, but also know for sure that I will feel terrible because the second one isn't out yet and I will want it too. So that's my tiny little haul. Uh, he was so good in April, meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to hauls. I do have a couple of digital things. I've been trying not to buy as many, but for some reason in April, my finger slipped and things happened. So I'm going to talk about two books from the same author, Stacey Lee. They actually went on sale for Kindle, and I actually own them. I just wanted to own them on Kindle. So the first one is Under a Painted Sky, which was her debut novel. It's about two young women, Samantha and Anna Mae, and Samantha is Chinese, anime is black, and they team up together, disguise themselves as boys in order to go across the United States and get to the West and hopefully pursue a future okay. that works for them. Uh, but it's obviously dangerous yeah. for a woman. First of all, it's dangerous for women, and it's also dangerous for people of, color, of their yeah. race yeah. during that time. So it's quite the adventure. It was very heart-wrenching when I read it. The other book that I got that was also by Stacey Lee is Outrun the Moon. This one is set in San Francisco around the time of the San Francisco earthquake. Ooh. It's about a young woman named Mercy who is determined to break free from her life of poverty and, you know, make the most out of the education she's getting at a private academy. 
basically at the time. I like that. We also have a couple of historical romances. So the first is Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase, which I have heard lots of people talk about. I sure. do not know much about it, except that obviously there is a break or rogue involved, and that's really all I ask for in most of my historical events. Mark <laughs> Marquess, actually, not no, a duke. Marquis? Marquess. I also got Her Night with the Duke, which is by ah. Diana Quincy. This one is a recommendation from Jessica over at Peace Love Books, and it is about a widow. She ends up having a sort of one-night stand encounter with someone, and it turns out that someone is actually supposed to be betrothed to her daughter-in-law, which awkward but also they try to fight off this attraction between them obviously and i am here already for the angst oh, and the romance i also got a book called the chanter's blade bakunawa rising one which is by a &B. i only heard about this one recently and it was compared to shadow of the fox by julie kago which is part of the reason why i ended up grabbing a copy so the summary says task to complete the seven blades mac Makanas, I'd say, has traversed many lands, spending countless gold in waging wars. But when the last chief he has to face isn't blinded by gold nor fear of the blade, he employs his last weapon, deceit, in order to infiltrate his household. He thinks his plan is going well, but colonizers actually uncover the plan, and Lin Ai, the chief's secluded daughter, awakens the blade to protect her family. Which, you know, it, it says, to defeat the giant moon-eating serpent, he must get Lin Ai to the Bolo warrior village, but first she must learn to trust him, which sounds fun to me. All right, Filipino mythology. Yeah. Very nice, very uh, nice. I also got a book called Love Notes, which is by Stacey Hart, and it is a contemporary sort of retelling or story inspired by Sense and Sensibility, which ah. is actually my favorite of the Jane Austen works that I've oh, read. I did not know uh, that. Don't need to know specifics, so I have no idea what they are. <laughs> That's, that's I really also good. have Take Me, which is the third book in the Burl Friend series by Jen Trin. And I read Crushing on You, I want to say earlier this year, and it was so much fun. I really enjoyed Jen Trin's way of writing Asian characters into her story. So I'm looking forward to reading this one as well, because it sounds like it's going to be fun. The romance is between two characters we've already met in the first book. So can't wait to check it out complete change of pace we have a fantasy romance oh. and it's a heart of blood and ashes which is the first book in the a gathering of dragons series by mila vane oh gathering of dragons i honestly know nothing more about this than that there are dragons and warriors involved in it and it is a fantasy romance sometimes that's enough and that's pretty that was enough for me so <laughs> And the last digital thing I need to talk about is At the End of the Matinee, which is by Kichiro Hirano, and it is translated by Juliet Carpen Winters Carpenter. And it is about two characters. There is a classical guitarist named Satoshi Makino, and there is a journalist named Yoko Komine, and they kind of form a bond upon their instant meeting, but it follows them over the years as they meet over and over again, though they don't know if the connection between them will stay intact or if it's going to eventually fray apart. And I had literally just heard of this recently and it just sounds interesting to me. It sounds very slice of life anime, which yeah. is probably what drew me to it in the first place. All right, so I also went book shopping because why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't she? So on Indie Bookstore Day, I actually met up with Kristen and Andrew and that's I right. went with them to a couple of places and I picked up a couple of books because that's just my life that's now. That's who she is. So yeah. the first book I picked up was Crying in H Mart, which is by Michelle <laughs> Zauner. It is a sort of memoir by this author and I literally only wanted to read it after seeing the title because H Mart. And that was, it's like Karen H. Mart by me three years ago. I don't know. I also picked up Minor Feelings, which is by Kathy Park Hong. This is a so non-fiction. You didn't pick up a lot of feelings, just some minor feelings. <laughs> Sorry, just the least said that. This is. <laughs> this basically traces the author's relationship to the English language, to depression, poetry, all of that. It is her sort of take on being Asian American. Sure. And I'm looking forward to reading that. Two nonfiction books. Who am I, guys? Who right. am I? The last book I picked up is also completely on a whim. And I just saw the title and I was like, this sounds intriguing. And then I read what it was about and I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy Grab this book. that, yeah. So it's called If Cats Disappeared From The World, which is by Genki Karamura. And it's about a young postman and he literally has no one in his life except his cat. Oh. Who he named Cabbage, but you know. Sure. He gets a diagnosis that he only has months to live oh. and before he even starts thinking about all the things he wants to do before that happens The devil shows up and makes him an offer So he says that in exchange for making one thing in the world disappear the postman gets an extra day of his life And so the book covers an entire week where this postman 
and his cat apparently <laughs> are brought to the brink of existence so I just think it sounds interesting. I am terrified that the cat will disappear, <laughs> actually. I'm so. terrified the cat's gonna kill the owner for naming him Cabbage. Anyway. And the last book I picked up was at Shakespeare and Company on the Upper East, no, Upper West Side. Right. And it's the phone bo booth at the edge of the world, which oh is by boy. Laura in my oh Messina. Boy. This is the one that I have mentioned to Mackie and a couple of other people where it's about a phone booth in a small town in Japan where people go to call their lost loved ones yeah so it sounds really sad but i also couldn't resist because it also sounds re like it's going to be really moving yeah, based on kind of true events it. yeah. yes it's based on a phone booth that actually exists yeah i'm already sad just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> okay two books i bought because of kristen kristen is getting a lot of mentions in this video so first is ikigai the japanese secret to a long and happy life by hector uh, garcia yeah, yeah. and francesc morales and this is a non-fiction book about ikigai and Kristen really enjoyed it when she read it. So I was like, you know what? I'm also going to pick it up and yeah, read it that, as that's, well. That's like I a Venn diagram intrigued. intersection of like things you could monetize, things you love, things you're passionate about, etc. Yeah. It's a pretty good thing. Yeah. Also, because of Kristen, I bought a book called Tokyo Fashion, which is basically like a comic book style uh, guide to how Japanese people dress. And this is by Nadoka. And I got it because Kristen showed it in the hall and the illustrations are just so cute. That's cute. So yeah. definitely excited about that. And then, when I was out with Kristen and Rachel this time, we went to McNally down in South Street Seaport. I picked up a physical copy of To the Lighthouse by Vir Virginia Woolf. Haven't read any Virginia Woolf yet, but this is the one I wanted to start with because my cousin Carmela is also planning to oh, read it. Oh, that's right, yeah. I know nothing except that it's about it's set in uh, off the coast of Scotland in sure. a summer house sure. and it is basically three different I don't know if it's three different perspectives or three different times in the life of one family Got so it. there's that I also picked up How Much of These Hills is Gold by C. Pem Zhang this is a historical fiction novel set in the United States so an Asian, Asian perspective which is the reason why I picked it up in the first place because I always find that interesting almost there so this book I ordered because Instagram alerted me that to the fact that it existed and it's beautiful Ooh, it this is like gorgeous. the spring special edition that i think it's penguin who does them it's for the secret garden by francis francis, francis hodgson, hodgson, hodgson burnett this beautiful stencil it comes with this plastic cover too which is kind of crazy gorgeous. and there are only ten thousand copies in existence so obviously we knew we were going to buy this right <laughs> like we, we knew course. it was going to happen the secret garden is one of my favorite childhood reads also one of mackie's Forever. favorite reads like we've reread it and consumed it in various multiple formats multiple times and we still love it to this day so to this day deserves a spot and last but certainly not least we got our illumicrate edition of Rule of Wolves by With Lee Bardugo, which has the edges. beautiful red edges, and uh, unlike the maroon hardcover, that is the typical Look one. At this. It Look has at this. a white oh. hardcover with red foil, and the side says, we're all monsters now. I mean, if you think about it. I loved Rule of Wolves. I read it right around the time when we got it, because I had, had to. to. And Rule of Wolves is the second book in Nikolai's duology. It's now officially called the King of Scars duology, but I still call it the Nikolai duology. Because who and, is the King of Scars, if not Nikolai? And it continues the saga that began in King of Scars, where Nikolai is fighting to rid himself of the effects, effects of the first of the book first, of the first, first trilogy, trilogy. <laughs> he's fighting for that and he also is fighting for the sake of his country beloved Ravka uh, and sure. by his side is General Zoya Nazielenski who is basically his right hand woman he's and basically the real runs things power pretty in Ravka much, right if you think about it and we also have Nina who is now officially serving as a spy for the kingdom of Ravka mm -hmm. and Things get kind of hairy in this book, I'm not gonna lie, but it was great, and you should definitely check it out. And by you, I mean Mackie. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the whole all right. time. That has brought us to the end of this book haul. Thank you for sticking around and watching all of it. We hope you had fun. And if you found any new titles you're interested in, or stuff you've read that you just saw us haul and want us to read too, then definitely let us know. Other than that, you can find us on all the other social media sites listed down below. Mackie will soon have another exciting new announcement for you guys, hopefully. And we will see you guys with a new video soon. Bye! Bye.